Concordia. We're so glad to have you guys here. If you wouldn't mind standing as we sing our opening song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mountain lonely exile until the sun. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Please be seated, I think. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Good to see everybody this morning. I was having so much fun talking and visiting and hearing stories. By the way, I was hearing lots of stories about uh, I'm thankful for you cards. Are you still using those? Because I see that there's some over here stacked up and uh, they're available. And if we run out, we'll make more. But we're doing this all the way through the end of the holiday season. So please make use of those cards. It's a great way to say thank you. Heard stories about those cards last night. Uh, let's, let's use them and show people appreciation that we're grateful for them. A couple other things I want to mention to you. Uh, first of all, I know some of you are thinking about drive through Nativity and uh, how that went. Some of you were here. Some of you volunteered. But it's a much smaller crew this year. Uh, we had an amazing turnout. Uh, from, from the moment we opened at 5 o'clock, there were already, the parking lot was full and we had cars on the access road, uh, which has never happened on Saturday night before. And so we're expecting another really full night. So if you will continue to pray for God to bless it and uh, for him to use it to his glory and to keep everybody safe and healthy, that will be a wonderful, a wonderful prayer. Also want to let you know, uh, on Wednesday we have our voters meeting. And that's a meeting where members come together and we vote on officers and we uh, hopefully, Lord willing, approve a budget. And so that's at 7 o'clock on Tuesday the 8th, this coming Tuesday. It's in this room. We use all of the same protocols. Uh, watch your email. If you haven't seen already the, the invitation to register, that email has gone out. But it'll also have tomorrow a link so that you can stream it. Because if you're not able to be here, you can still stream that service to, on Tuesday evening. Let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and the opportunity we have to come together and to, to be in this place and to worship. 
Lord, whether we are present in the room or whether we are streaming it elsewhere, we ask that you will bless us and strengthen us for this time we spend, that we might see hope through you in all kinds of different places. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels see. Silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. He says to bring him praise, the babe, the son of Mary. for today's scripture reading. Our scripture reading for today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruits. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. You know, the prophet Isaiah talks about a righteous one who in his day was to come, a savior who was going to come for the world. And during this time of year, we celebrate that savior who has come into the world in Jesus as we put our faith and hope and trust in him. And so together now, we're going to confess our faith in Jesus and in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please say these words with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and in Jesus. You may be seated. 
want to say again good morning and welcome to you, whether you're worshiping with us in the house or online. We are so very glad that you're worshiping with us today. And I also want to say thank you for your incredible support of this ministry over what has been a crazy year. You know, if you'd like to give to Concordia's ministries today, there are several different ways you can do that. If you don't have the app, my oh my, now could not be a better time to get the app. It has all sorts of great stuff on there, including uh, the track that you'll need for tonight's drive through Nativity. If you didn't come last night, please come tonight and uh, you can get all the information about drive through Nativity and what you'll need to drive through the drive through Nativity on the Concordia app. We also have uh, sermons and Bible classes on there, whole listings of events, and then of course you can give directly from the app. It's real simple. You can do it right now if you want to. Uh, you can also give using the website. Just go to concordia.cc, click on the little tab that says Give, and uh, you can make your gift there as well. Now, if you brought a check this morning, thank you so much. You'll see some offering boxes. You can drop your check in the offering boxes on the way out. Or if you prefer to give using a check and you're worshiping with us online today, uh, just mail the check to the address that is right there on your screen. Now, we're a church who loves to pray, and we'd love to be able to receive your prayer requests. And so maybe you're going through something and you'd like folks to lift you up in prayer. Well, you can send us your prayer request by, again, going to the website, concordia.cc, and then just add slash prayer. And you'll see a form right there and you can send us your prayer request and then we'll be delighted to add you to our prayer list. But right now, how about we go to God in prayer together? Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your incredible blessings, even during difficult seasons. As we look at our worlds, we may have a lot of reasons to be concerned, worried, upset, afraid, and yet we know that you've come into this world and you've come into all the mess of this world in your son Jesus. And because of that, we know that you'll walk through it with us no matter what we face. And so for those who are sick, we ask you to be with them, restore them to health according to your will. Be with those on the front lines of this pandemic, doctors and nurses, other medical professionals, first responders. Protect them as they seek to treat us. Heavenly Father, be with our nation, be with our leaders. They have difficult decisions to make, and so give them the wisdom that they need to govern faithfully and well. Be with our men and women in our nation's armed forces. You know, this is a difficult time of year for them. A lot of them are separated from their families as they're serving in locations all over the world. And so bring them home to us safely and quickly. And Father, thank you for their service. Protect them as they seek to protect us. Father, we know that you bless us in so many ways. And during this season of the year, we know that you've blessed us with your son, Jesus. He is your greatest gift of all. So thank you for him. Thank you for all that he has done. And now together we pray in his name as we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Since you're here, AC, uh, great job on the song. So that, was, uh, that song was written by Adam and by Dave Madden. You probably remember Dave Madden. He's been here a hundred times, if not more. But uh, beautiful. Love it. And one of the cool things about that song is that it, it forms the basis also for our series. And you notice in that song, it talks about gathering round. And when we think about gathering around at Christmas time, we think about gathering around with other people. We think about parties and luncheons and banquets and celebrations and services and all kinds of times where we gather with other people, and that's all different this year. But you notice that, that the Gather Around song and hopefully this series will do something to help point us towards the fact that even when we're not gathering around in the normal ways, there's still a reason to gather around at Christmas. The most important reason. The reason that sometimes gets pushed to the side by all the busyness and everything else. The reason we gather around is Jesus. And God's incredible love for us and sending him to be our Savior. That's what we gather around. Now, before we get into the rest of the message, I want to mention a couple of other things to you. First of all, at the end of this service, we'll celebrate communion. And so we'll give you instructions, and, and you'll know what to do. The ushers will help us with all of that. But I just wanted you to be prepared. And for those who are streaming the service online, uh, be sure that you have your communion uh, ready, so it's some wine or grape juice and some bread, and we'll give you all of the instructions. Pastor Zach will take care of that after we finish 
this service. We'll kind of transition right into that. But the thing that you need to know if you're here in the room is that you'll come forward, receive communion, and then exit right out the side. And if you're not planning to commune today, you'll be able to come forward and, and exit out the side and just give that indication to the folks as you come up. The second thing I want to tell you about is part of this Gather Around series, we also are preparing some video devotions. They're just short. But Pastor Zach and I are putting together some thoughts to go along with the theme for the week that we'll have available links for you and you'll have, find them in social media. They'll come out in, the, in the emails. But we want you to be able to share those and have those because in this crazy time with so many distractions, we want you to have just a little extra spiritual firepower. Just a little something extra to help keep you on track and focused and encouraged in this time. Last thing I want to mention is on Wednesday... We'll have our midweek service at 7 o'clock. And just like last week for our tree lighting, it will be outside. And so we'll have a, a place for chairs. We'll have a place where people can stand. But we'll also... No COVID. There will also be a place for you to pull up with your car, like a drive-in theater, just like we did last weekend. Only thing is, how many were here last weekend? Okay, don't be surprised if it's just a little bit different. And we'll have people there to direct you, but we're trying to figure out if we can shift and make it a little bit more accessible to the cars uh, who come and park because we want, you, we want you to be able to come to the service and feel safe. And uh, for some folks, that's the first and only way they're going to be back here on campus in the near future. So hope you'll consider being part of our Wednesday Advent service. So when we talk about gathering round, there are some centerpieces that we'll be focused on through each of, the, each of the weeks. And one of the centerpieces that we're talking about today is the whole idea of the Christmas tree. Now, I love Christmas decorations, and my favorite is probably a Christmas tree. But this morning, I have a, a different kind of a Christmas tree in mind. Now, I'm old enough to remember back when it aired for the very first time, but How many of you have seen A Charlie Brown Christmas? Uh, How many of you are brave enough to raise your hand and say, yeah, I saw it with you when it aired the very first time? Yeah. Funny how all those hands went down, some of you. But we've all seen it, and and so we all know what the Charlie Brown Christmas tree looks like, right? You remember this? There it is. It looks beautiful. But you'll also probably remember that that tree didn't start out that way. In fact, you remember when he, when he put the very first and only decoration on the tree, this is what it looked like. Kind of drooped over and looked like it was going to collapse, and you can see the dismay on the faces in the background. It didn't look like much of a tree. Now, the reason I'm thinking about that Charlie Brown Christmas tree is because before there were Christmas trees the way we think of them, the Bible tells us about a Christmas tree. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, it says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. It's talking about a a small, tiny little branch that will spring up out of the stump of this family tree. Now, we all know what a stump looks like. A stump is not a symbol of life, is it? A stump is not a symbol of vitality. A stump is, is an indication of where life used to be. Where there used to be a living tree, now there, there is this stump that remains. But Isaiah is saying that, that from this family tree of Jesse, so remember Jesse was King David's father. And King David was the greatest king in all of Israel. And God makes a promise to King David that that from his family, they will reign forever before God. And so it says in 2 Samuel 7, verse 16, Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. So in other words, Jesse's family line, the, the, the throne that David sat on, his ancestors will continue to sit on that, and they will reign before God forever. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because David had his faults and flaws and made some big-time mistakes, but after David, things only got worse. This royal throne that God was establishing became a stump. The kings that followed David were, were wicked and they did all kinds of evil things and they were far away from God. And so literally what's being promised here 
is that through that same line of Jesse, through the the kingship of David and his ancestors, God's going to take what they've turned into a dead stump and he's going to restore that royal throne forever with this tiny little branch that springs up. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a tree coming back to life, a, a, a branch springing from a stump, but I brought a picture of one. Isn't that beautiful? And I don't know if you realize or not, but literally a tree can, can a full-grown tree can spring forth from a stump. It doesn't happen all the time, but if there are enough nutrients in the root system, if things happen just right, a fully grown tree can emerge from a stump like that. So out of that, that symbol of lifelessness or an indication of where life used to be, life can reemerge. So that's what I want to talk about in these next few minutes. I want to circle back and I want to talk about what that branch, that tiny little branch that comes out of that lifeless stump, what it brings to our world and literally what it brings to you and me. So you ready? Point number one. That tiny little branch coming out of that lifeless stump brings wisdom. Not just any kind of wisdom, incredible wisdom. Brings the wisdom of God. And and when I think about that in our current situation, I mean, think about how important that is. We're living in a time where, where there are so many questions and so many unknowns and so much uncertainty. Having wisdom in this time is really powerful. That's why we gather around. We need that amazing wisdom. Look at what it says in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Will rest on that tiny branch that's springing forth. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The Spirit of counsel and of might. The Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. You know, I don't know. You guys probably haven't. But uh, I'll ask anyway. Anybody ever done something dumb? Yeah, it seems like I'm always doing something dumb. And the thing about doing something dumb is that the reason it's dumb is because you really knew better, right? If you just thought it through a little bit more, if you just remembered some little detail, if you'd just taken a little more time, you wouldn't have made the mistake. So literally, as recently as yesterday, I'd found these these smart plugs for Black Friday sales, right? Now, if you don't know what a smart plug is, a smart plug is kind of this cool device. You put it in your outlet, and then you can control it through the Wi-Fi on your phone. You can even control it with, with commands. And it's, it's really neat, and I thought it would be really helpful and handy because Julie's got these beautiful decorations in the house, and instead of having to go around and plug all of them in, you could put them on a group and say, turn on the decorations or tap a button on the phone and turn on all these decorations. It sounded like an awesome plan. So I got these two smart plugs, like 70% off, so they're, it was an awesome deal, and I decided I was going to try to install them, so I, I, I tried once, didn't work, stinking things, tried a second time, doggone it, they sent me something was broken, I'm going to have to package it, I tried a third time, just giving it every opportunity, no good. I literally packaged them all up, put them on the kitchen table to be able to send back to remind me that I needed to print out the little send it back form. And I decided yesterday morning, you know what, doggone it, I'm going to try one more time. And as I was going through the instructions, I noticed that there was this little piece. I've had to do this with smart devices in the past, and I'd ignored it this time. And it worked like a charm. And I went, duh. Another dumb move, right? Now, I want you to know something. In in all honesty, all true confession, on the scale of dumbness, if this is like the minimal dumb to like this is the maximum dumb, that really sits on the very low side of the major dumb things I've done before, right? Right? But what's a dumb thing? Well, a dumb thing is when you take the knowledge that you have and you don't apply it to life. That's the opposite of wisdom because wisdom is when you take knowledge and you apply it. Well, that tiny little branch growing out of that lifeless stump, it says in Isaiah 11.3, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might, 
Now think about what it's saying. That branch is going to take the, the knowledge of God and apply it through counsel and might to our lives. He's bringing incredible wisdom into our life and into our world, and we can count on it because it's the promise of God. So that tiny branch growing out of that lifeless stump brings wisdom. Point number two, that tiny little branch growing out of that lifeless stump brings justice. In Isaiah 11, verses 3 and 4, it says, He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. Have you ever heard that phrase, justice is blind? That's what Isaiah is saying. That this tiny little branch growing out of this lifeless stump is going to come into this world and he's going to bring justice. You know, I think I told you a couple of weeks ago about one of my kids who changed Julie's phone so that whenever the phone rings and it's, and it's from this one of my children, it says, your favorite child. <laughs> and it's funny, right? It makes me smile every time I see it. But the reality is favoritism isn't necessarily funny. And when favoritism moves to prejudice, it's not funny at all. And when prejudice produces injustice, that's a bad thing. And it tears up lives and it divides our society and it makes a mess of things. What Isaiah is saying is that that tiny little branch growing out of that lifeless stump is not going to show favoritism. That tiny little branch growing out of that lifeless stump is not going to be prejudiced. It's not going to allow injustice. It's going to bring justice because that tiny branch cares about people who've been dismissed. It cares about people who've been marginalized. It cares about people that no one else cares about. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, have you ever felt like nobody cares about you? Have you ever felt like you're being marginalized or dismissed? See, the good news about the justice that this tiny little branch is going to bring is it's not just justice for people that we recognize as being dismissed or marginalized or, or in receiving injustice. It means that God cares about every single one of us. And he will bring justice for everyone. So the tiny branch brings wisdom. Tiny branch brings justice. This is my favorite that tiny branch brings reconciliation. Uh, listen to this word picture. Just, just kind of let this sink in and, and think about it in your mind. Isaiah 11, verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Imagine that. Knowledge of the Lord literally filling the earth like the waters fill the sea. But what about that picture? I mean, those, those animals, those creatures that are normally enemies, that are normally dangerous to one another, living in peace, becoming friends. How in the world does that happen? Well, that's the power of that tiny little branch growing out of that lifeless stump. You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, after we finished our drive through Nativity, I was driving home, and I pulled into our neighborhood, and it was kind of cool because while we were at the drive through Nativity, lots of folks apparently went out in the afternoon and put up Christmas decorations. So as we were coming back into the neighborhood, there were all kinds of lights and, and all kinds of different styles, right? I mean, in one house, you've got the, the house where it looks like somebody took a bucket of Christmas and just threw it wherever it went, right? By the way, I love those decorations. 
I think they look awesome. All the colors and stuff scattered everywhere and a million things to look at. I think about the kids looking at and just being enthralled, right? So there were those kinds of decorations on one side of the street. On the other side of the street, you know, there were the perfect white lines, right? All perfectly organized with beautiful bows. And I love those lights. I love all of those decorations. And we're driving through all kinds of different, different decorations, inflatables, lights, big lights, small lights, colored lights, white lights. It was beautiful. And then I realized as I was driving along that in many of the houses, in in the midst of many of the decorations, were all kinds of different nativity scenes. So in the house where, you know, the bucket of Christmas got thrown out, there was a nativity scene. It was kind of camouflaged in the midst of all of it. But as I, I looked at it, I saw, oh, that's awesome. And over here in the, in the pristine white lighthouse, there was another nativity scene. And down the way a little further, there was another one. In fact, there's, as you come into our neighborhood, there's a corner where you go up the hill toward our house. And, and literally right straight ahead where my headlights were directly on it was this beautiful white silhouette nativity scene. And while I was driving in, I was thinking to myself, isn't that cool? That those people in those houses, in the midst of their decorations, they could put up whatever they want. But they were putting up that nativity scene, and it told me something about them. We're part of the same family. They're brothers and sisters of mine. That there's a bond between us, even though I don't even know their names, many of them, there is a bond between us that brings us together. It's that branch. That's how it brings all of those animals together as friends. And it does the same thing for us. You know, one of the things that has been most heartbreaking during this whole COVID-19 season has been all of the divisions and dissension and controversy and conflict between Christian people. Relationships being broken between Christian brothers and sisters over, over politics or over medical advice or over, you name it, right? You know, you've seen it. And it breaks my heart because that's not God's plan for our family of faith, for Christian brothers and sisters. He wants us to be unified. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, remember the last thing as he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was arrested, before he was taken for his trial, before he was executed, he was praying in the Garden. And do you remember what he prayed? First of all, he said, Father, I'm grateful that you and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, that whole idea. He's saying, I'm grateful that we are one. And then he prayed for all Christians, not just for his disciples. He prayed for everyone who will believe in Jesus because of the message of the disciples. And you remember what he prayed? He prayed that we, that we would be one like he and the Father were one. See, i got to tell you something. These divisions among Christians, they don't just break my heart or your heart. They break God's heart. And it goes deeper than that. Jesus said, I pray that they will be one as you and I are one so that the world will know that you sent me. The mission of the church depends on us being able to, to be filled with God's love and filled with his spirit and be unified. That's what that tiny little branch does growing out of that lifeless stump. But there's just one more thing, and it's kind of cool to understand because what we haven't said, what we haven't talked about, even though I know you know, but the question that's sort of hanging out there is, who is the branch, right? Someone that flows from the line of King David But to really get the picture, to really see how cool this verse is, you need to understand a Hebrew word and something about the town of Nazareth. So the Hebrew word, simple. It's the word Nazar. Say it with me. Nazar. And the word Nazar means branch. So here's the thing. 700 years after this prophecy, after Isaiah, a baby was born in a town of Bethlehem. Parents had gone there to register because his father and mother were of the house and line of David, so they went there, and this baby was born. Remember, there's no fanfare. This is like the most 
cut rate budget operation ever. Literally, the baby's born in a stable. His bed is a manger, a feeding trough. But in the midst of all of this, the, the king over this whole area named Herod, he finds out from some wise men that there was going to be a future king born in Bethlehem, and King Herod would have none of that, and so he sent his soldiers to kill all of the little ones in Bethlehem. And so God warned that baby's parents, and they left. They fled from Bethlehem, and they went to Egypt, and they hid out for a while. And then after a while, they came back, and guess where they settled? in a town called Nazareth. In fact, Matthew kind of sums it up. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 23, he sums up this whole section about Jesus' birth and, and how he lands there. He says, So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a what? A Nazarene. Now here's the interesting thing. The word Nazareth, literally taking that word Nazar, which means branch, Nazareth means branch town. Nazareth is branch town. Now you may say, well, that's kind of cool, what, but what's that have to do with anything? Well, here's the thing. Branch town, Nazareth, was not some great, wonderful, marvelous city. It was a backwater, miserable place that where everyone in the culture believed that there was nothing good that could ever possibly come from Nazareth. In fact, if you remember, one of Jesus' future disciples, a man named Nathaniel, when his brother tells him about the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, you remember what Nathaniel says? Nazareth? Are you kidding me? Can anything good come from there? I mean, literally, Branch Town was a, a place that people thought of, and they, they kind of rolled up their nose. They didn't go visiting Branch Town. And they were convinced that anybody who came from Nazareth was nothing more than a branch town bum. And that brings me back to Charlie Brown's little Christmas tree. Because that branch town bum wasn't beautiful to anybody. And nobody expected anything wonderful to happen. But it did. Remember the picture? with the branch growing out of a stump, I want you to understand something. That picture isn't about telling you how strong that branch is because that branch grows up to be a mighty tree. That branch grows up to be the, the king of the universe. That picture is intended to show people like you and me that where there is no sign of life, where there is no hope left, where there's nothing but death, when it comes to our God and his branch, there's always hope. I mean, a stump is a symbol of death. Dead trees, just like a graveyard, is a symbol of death. Dead people. But look at what God did in a graveyard. See, dear friends, we're living in a time where we need hope. We need to be pumped up and lifted up and encouraged. We need to be filled during this season because you and I, even if we don't like the way things are going, even if we don't get to have the same celebrations, even if stuff is hurting us or making us afraid, you and I know that where there is hopelessness, where there is fear, where there is discouragement, where there is brokenness, that branch whose name is Jesus brings hope and brings life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that our hope does not depend on us, that it depends on you and your ancient word and your promises fulfilled. Lord, bless and strengthen us today that we might walk in that hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And as we leave this place, go into the world and shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the message of life. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Israel 
strength.